is the Dean of Travel, Dean Jacobs, reporting to you from Ethiopia, Africa. And one of the main reasons I've come to Ethiopia was to gain some insight on the Sudanese population that lives in Nebraska. But the more I dig into it, the more complicated it becomes, but that's not unusual for a place like Africa. A political situation that dates back to 1955 with several layers of conflict escalated in 1983 as fighting in northern Sudan pushed into the south, creating a situation where thousands of people fled into surrounding countries like Ethiopia. Often, they ended up in areas like Gambela in western Ethiopia, situated close to the border with Sudan. Or in some situations, they went to countries like Kenya, Uganda, or Egypt. It is estimated that up to 2 million people have died in the conflict and displaced 4 million southern Sudan residents. I'm told Nebraska has the largest Sudanese population in the United States, and many have passed through the refugee camps of Gambela. Additionally, many living in Nebraska have family here. So, I set out with my friend, Police Commander Dawit, and we spent several days walking to one of the camps called Newland. New Land sits on the bank of the chocolate brown Barrow River. Life revolves around water, especially when it's scarce. Back in the States, we take it so much for granted being able to walk over to the kitchen tap for a glass of water that it, we don't even give it a second thought. But in a place like Gambella, people get their water from the river, and many spend an entire day going back and forth to the river filling yellow five-gallon jugs. As I walk around the camp, I encounter children playing and people going on with their daily lives. I briefly visit with people as we walk around, like these two older women who are enjoying a good smoke from the pipe. It doesn't fit my picture of a refugee camp. In my mind, I had saw a tent city. This has become a village and it looks like a typical countryside scene I often see from the window of my bus. A whole economy surrounds the settlement, shops, vegetable shacks, shoe shine boys, firewood for sale. There are all kinds of things to offer those with money, or the smiling faces of children, like these who I saw every day when I would buy my bottle of water. Occasionally, I would glance up into the trees to see Colbus monkeys charting our moves. As I walked around Newland, I met three people from Nebraska, back visiting family who currently live in the camps. First was Ian, a UNO engineer student from Omaha. Second was Thomas, he was from Lincoln. And third was Gat Bell, who was on a year-long project in Gambella but still lives in Omaha. With them, I shared injera and some of the local fish out of the Barrow River. And we talked about what it was like to go from here to Nebraska and then back again. I also ventured outside of Gambella to see other villages. Those who live further away from the river seem to have a harder life, but they still know how to smile and have fun. They were quite curious about me. Of course, much of their life is centered around gathering water. Like these three boys who were taking a short break as they moved large jugs of water back to their homes. While in Gambella, I visited the New Trust School of Academy. The school director was a nice man called Mr. Dabul. The school had 35 orphans who were sponsored by people back in Nebraska. The real challenge is finding a way to feed and clothe some of the students, says Mr. Dabul. With no ceiling fans on hot days and limited lighting, the learning environment can be challenging. But the students continue to work hard, and many have goals that will carry them onto higher education, 
like this nine-year-old student by the name of Tiggis. This school helps change myself, says Tiggis, which one day, my education, will help me change my country. Her dream is to become a doctor. Anyone who is interested in supporting the school should contact the South Sudan organization in Omaha, Nebraska. They can assist you in finding ways to help. Every evening, as I sat outside my hotel room, I would watch the amazing scene of the day coming to an end on the Baral River, as thousands of people would come down to, the, to cool and clean off after a long, hot day. As I watched people, I noticed when they first entered the river, they would throw stones into the water before stepping in. This, I learned, was a way of checking for any crocodiles who might be lurking in the brown waters. Two days before my arrival, someone was taken from the bank of the river by a large crocodile, so their concern definitely had some merit. This was the end of the dry season, and before too long, the Baral River will be swelling with water, and this scene will fade away until a year from now, when once again the dry cycle repeats itself, and beautiful silhouettes of evening bathers mark the end of a long day. I sit and I wonder how it must be to go from the banks of the Baro to the banks of the Missouri in Nebraska. Tune in again. There's more to come from Ethiopia. This is Dean Jacobs, reminding you to check your compass, because you never know where you might go with the Dean of Travel.